Hi, today's video is about a Newtone IM4006 master station. I picked this master station up from a local customer's house. It's a unit that I actually installed 27 years ago when they were building their new home and she contacted me about a week ago and said they were having problems with it and could I please come out and take a look at it and see if we could get it fixed for her. So I said, sure, why not? Harvey and I, Harvey, this is Harvey here. Harvey's a hedgehog and uh, he's our shop mascot and he's also our YouTube aficionado and he's supervising this video today. His job is to make sure the videos are of the highest quality and to also get all you folks who watch our videos to please subscribe. So he's sitting here watching what I'm doing so I have to behave myself. Anyway, back to the intercom. I went out to take a look at it and it has a fairly common problem so I went ahead and removed the set and brought it back to the shop and today I'm going to repair it. But I thought I would show you what's wrong with it since it's a fairly common problem. So I'm going to call this video Newtone IM4006 Common Failure Mode Number 1 because this is the single most common problem that we have with 4006s at this time. And uh, let me go ahead and show you what it's doing. I just have it hooked up to my bench power supply. I've got a display transformer hooked up to it. I don't have any speakers or anything hooked to it because it's not really necessary at this time. Uh, let me go ahead and switch it on and let's see if you can figure out what's wrong with it. Have you figured it out yet? Can you tell what's wrong with it? I hope that you can. Let me shut it off and talk a little more and then we'll take a little closer look at it. So for those of you who were paying attention, you would have heard the big, giant, massive buzzing sound that it's making. And that's a common problem with 4006s. It indicates it has a failure in the primary power supply in the master station. And it could also be in more localized power supplies. The way the 4006 is designed, there's a primary power supply which regulates the voltage that comes in from the low voltage transformer. Then it distributes it out to each individual board. Every individual board, whether it's the clock display or the tuner or the cassette preamp motor control board or the intercom control board, they all have their individual localized power supplies also. And the main board, the master control board, which is the board behind here with all of the buttons and switches on it, it has actually two different localized power supplies. Sometimes on sets like these, when the primary power supply fails, it will send out in correct voltages to each individual board or sometimes some of the individual boards and that will put an extra load or demand on the local power supplies on those boards and that will become a problem also. So this is entirely what I call an age related problem. After 27 years there are components in here that have simply run their lifespan and have fail to the point where you get this massive buzzing noise. The way this typically will occur, it's almost always one of two ways. What you have to realize is when this was installed 27 years ago by me, the moment it was connected to power, those all the components in the set started to age. And there are certain types of components that have lifespans and when they reach the end of their lifespan, the failure accelerates and the way it typically will show up in a model like the 4006, it's always one of two ways. It's the mo There are the models that one day you'll notice there's a little bit more background hum on the system than you previously had had. And then over a really long period of time, could be months, could be a year or more sometimes, the hum will become louder and louder as more and more components continue to fail and at some point the hum will turn into more of a buzz and if you wait long enough the buzz will get louder and louder and louder and like I said this can take months or a year or more sometimes for it to happen so it's a very long slow gradual decline into failure if you wait long enough and you do what a lot of people do where the hum or the buzz gets too annoying they just go around into every room and they turn the volumes down so they can't hear it. 
That doesn't make the hum go away. It doesn't make the problem go away. It just covers up the problem for the time being, but the problem is still occurring. And if you wait long enough, one day you'll walk by it and look at the master station and you'll notice, hey, the clock's not on anymore. And if you reach that point, it's well into, on a, on a 1 to 10 scale, t 1 being barely starting to fail, and 10, it's so bad that you really can't stand it anymore. By the time you reach the point where the clock has gone out, you have now reached an 11. You're way off the scale, and it's really, really bad. The other way that sets like the 4006 can fail, and I've had a lot of customers tell me this, so I know it's true, is that one day it was fine, and the next day it sounds like this. And those are the ones that I, the way I explain it to people is that they were going along and they seemed just fine and then suddenly there was a, a more dramatic failure and they fell off the cliff and failed. And that's kind of what happened to this one because she said it was fine, they went away out of town for a few days and it was fine when they left and when they got home it was making this sound. It's just simply an age-related problem. Fortunately, since it occurred, she called me right away and it was only like this for a week or so, it won't be a problem with repairing it. If you're one of those people that you turn down the volumes and you ignore it until the, it dies or the clock goes out, those sets usually require more repair because the failure will grow through the set. As, as everything in the set has begins to fail more and more and more and more and everything is more and more and more out of specification it will put different and greater demands on bigger parts of the set and more and more things go wrong so those sets oftentimes are more difficult to repair so enough yammering on about the failures of an im 4006 i just wanted to let you see that this is a fairly common problem now i'm actually going to fix my customer's set and what i'm going to do is i'm going to disassemble it completely. I'm going to clean all the boards, clean all the controls. I'm going to repair the immediate problem with this, which is the humming, and then I'm going to check it to make sure it operates correctly. And once I know that there aren't any more operational problems with it, I'm going to replace all of the components on all of the boards that are the types that fail due to age. The idea being that when we give her back her set and reinstall it, it may not be exactly like resetting the clock back to 27 years ago, but we're going to be really close to that and the set's going to have good longevity because enough of it has been rebuilt that there aren't components that should typically fail in the near future. I, what I always tell people is you can expect to get another 12 or 15 years out of it without any kind of real problems. I'm not going to do a component by component repair video because it's too involved and it messes up the workflow here at the shop. However, if you're kind of interested in what it, what goes into rebuilding a set like this 4006, we do have a playlist that shows their time-lapse videos. There is no audio. You get to see me move at, I think it's 22 times real speed and whip through rebuilding an entire 4006 master station. You can kind of see uh, the lengths that we go to to do this properly. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild Maureen's set here. When I'm done, I'll have it all hooked up and I'll show you that it works. So I'll be back in a little while. Harvey's going to lunch. Today's um, pizza bar day at the local pizzeria so he's meeting his friends down there and they're gonna eat a bunch of pizza so he'll be back maybe or maybe not i don't know it depends on how many beers he has i guess anyway i'll be back in a while hi i'm back so a little bit of time has passed and i've got maureen's im 4006 white rebuilt uh, it did indeed have a severely failed primary power supply in checking some of the other boards, I found other power supply sections on those boards in need of repair also. So that was done once I got rid of the hum and got everything back up and working again so it functioned correctly. I disassembled the entire set. I replaced all of the components on all of the boards that are of the type that fail. And here's the sack of parts from Marine's 4006. You can see there's quite a bit. Part of the normal rebuild here is I disassemble, partially disassemble the cassette player, take it out of the out of the face plate. We clean it, we lube it, we put new belts in it, and rebuild the audio input output board and the motor control board. It's all one circuit board, and get that all 
put back together. And then once I get it operational, I put a speed tape in it. It's a calibrated tape with a calibrated signal on it. And I hook it up to the oscilloscope and set the motor speed so it runs at the right speed so your tapes don't sound weird. This one was about 10% slow, which is slow enough that you can actually hear it when you play music that you listen to all the time. And it's all done and ready to go. I've got it hooked up on a little mini system here. So I've got a single inside station. I've got it hooked up to my door speaker, which is over there on the end of the workbench mounted on the wall. I've got a chime module here, here, chime module that came out of her set. I won't put it in until I'm ready to uh, button it all up 100%. Let's go ahead and turn it on. If we remember what it was like when I turned it on last time, listen really, really carefully and see if you can tell the difference. That's it. It's on. You can see the clock here. It's a little hard to see because of the lighting, but it is on. We'll go ahead and turn the radio on. A lot of people who have no religious preference, uh, the, the one religious point that they have... We'll turn it down a little say, well, bit. Every, everything. I preset the radio stations. That's all the AMs and the FMs. Reception here at the shop today is kind of lousy on FM, so there's only one or two stations that come in pretty well. I always think it's kind of amusing that we have a shop where we essentially fix radios and we have terrible reception a lot of days. Some days is better than others. Uh, let's go ahead and play the cassette. We're waiting for the leader to go run through. That's all we can play without getting a YouTube strike for copyright violation, uh, but it does play well. Fast forward works. Rewind. Auto shut off works. Uh, the intercom works properly. We can do inside patio talk. You can hear it come out of the remote speaker. The little bit of howling noise is feedback because the speakers are too close to each other. And then we can do uh, inside patio talk, hands-free reply, we have door talk. That works fine. We can ring the doorbell and her installation is only has one button on the front door. And that sounds exactly as it should. So it's a successful repair. I'm sure she'll be very glad. I'm going to go back next week and reinstall it and do general service on her speakers and get everything up and being 100% for her. So that's all for today. Harvey couldn't be here for the end of the video. He sent me a text message. He's at the pizzeria and he's waiting for a Uber ride or to pick him up and bring him back to the shop because I think he uh, indulged a little too much at the uh, pizzeria. So he'll probably be in another video coming up. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and possibly helpful. If your 4006 sounded like this one at the beginning of the video, get a hold of us and we can rebuild yours also. That's all for today. See you on the next video.